we're going to be talking about the upcoming book, The Holy Roller from Image Comics. We got a chance to get a preview for it. Uh, this is coming out on November 22nd. Uh, let me go over the, the creative team. Uh, we will get into, Clay put together a little bit of a, kind of like a, there's a lot of references in the book that we want to get into. So Clay put together a slideshow, but I'll give you a spoiler warning before we get into that. The first part will be non-spoiler for the review. But this is written by Rick Remender, Andy Samberg, and Joe Troth Trothham, uh, with art by Roland Boshi, Moreno, Denicio and Colors, letters by Rose Wooten. Uh, and let me give you a quick synopsis of the book. This is a series premiere. Everyone was sitting around wondering when comedy legend Andy Samberg would join superstar writer Rick Remender and Fall Out Boy's multi-talented Joe Throtham. So this book is written by people that all over from all over the industry, all, all different kinds of entertainment industries, uh, to write a comic book about a vigilante hero who smashes people's face with a bowling ball and everyone's dreams have come true with art by the fan favorite Roland Boshi uh, to care for his ailing father, pro bowler Levi Levy Cohen uh, is forced to quit his dream job and return to his hometown, which he soon discovered has been overrun by neo-Nazis with only bowling with only a bowling ball connect collection to defend himself. Levy becomes the Holy Roller, a trick ball, trick bowling ball wielding Jewish superhero battling to liberate his home and bowl a perfect game against crime. Kingpin meets Inglorious Bastards meets Batman with equal parts action and humor in this special introductory issue with 42 full pages of story, two issues for the price of one, three writers for the price of one, same low price. Um, Clay, what did you think of Holy Roller? I dug it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rick Remainder, though. So I was like going in, uh, waiting for the like the great the stuff that you know is his part. And I feel like uh, some of the bloody bowler scenes are really due to Rick's involvement in this. But you definitely get Andy Samberg's voice in this. Yeah. Uh, I pulled up some of the panels. I felt like you definitely hear his voice uh, in the comic in some of the lines. Uh, it's weird because the tone shifts at time from really funny to really dark stuff. And yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so I don't know how it's going to maintain that through the rest of the book because it, it's talking about some serious shit. It was a little jarring, like to say the least, because it stars very lighthearted. Uh, and Very. you get a little bit of like drama, but it's more like teenage drama. Like it's more like regular everyday type of drama, right? Uh, also, I will say Rick Remender sometimes has uh, main characters in his books that are not the most likable people. Like I'm like, why yeah. am I supposed to be rooting for you, or why am I? Why should I care? Uh, specifically, I'm remembering a book called The Scumbag. I don't know if you've read that. It's very. Oh, recent. I haven't read that yet, but I was looking through his stuff I, and stuff I'm missing. I read the first issue, and I'm like, I don't think I like you, dude. I'm sorry. I don't know. I have to check back in on this book later. Uh, and I kind of felt not as harsh uh, against uh, Livia as as him on that on that Scumbag book, but for this one, I'm like. I don't know that I like this main character either. He's not, he's not a bad person, but he's also not a good dude. He's like, right. It's very kind of like, you know, middle of the road. So um, it's also I weird like, that like he, he has left and joined the Peace Corps, like, yeah, or, or Greenpeace and, and has just been great at it this whole time. And like, I don't know this kind of. Yeah. I, don't, story I, is. I feel like nothing in that opening sequence led me to believe that that's where this would end up. Uh, so yeah. it, it, it was a little, uh, like I said, just a little bit of a jarring trip to through this, but the, when the drama hits, like it hits hard, like it's, it's pretty heavy yeah. stuff too. Like, uh, all kinds of thing. And I'm like, oh man, this is, I need to read like something fun right after this to kind of get me, get me leveled again. Um, let, let me pull up some preview art from the first few pages and then. We'll go into spoilers in a second, so we can take a look look at your slides. So this is kind of the opening sequence. This is uh, we're back in 1986. This is Levy's dad, uh, and we'll talk about some of the references as well. But yeah, I mean, his dad is originally the Holy Roller, um, which I'll tell you this too. 
I didn't read the synopsis before going into this, so I didn't either. I figured based on the cover that he would turn into some kind of vigilante type of person. But even like yeah, throughout this issue, I feel like we haven't fully gotten there yet. Um what do you think of that? I you know, it's weird because in the beginning you get this early story of Levi and bowling. I mean, to me, I kind of got the kingpin vibe, you know, like yeah. we're gonna be in this bowling world that takes place in arcades and stuff. And so like I kind of thought we're gonna be funny. And so we've got this kid who's being picked on in the arcade and uh you know, obviously that gives him a great chance to have a hero's origin. Yeah. I, I will say, I think uh, the faces are very expressive all throughout the issue. Which oh, yeah, I really the art's like. great. Like, that really works. Uh, and the coloring, too, like, it really, like, it captures the feel of the arcade. But then sometimes when there's darker moments, like, like here he's being bullied, but, like, this isn't just normal bullying. Like, this dude is an asshole. And I love how Levy kind of defends himself with humor uh right so i think that's very cool so yeah well, Overall, you see the earliest notes of racism in him yes oh for sure like very much so um in in in, in a lot of these things so i really like it was just very interesting to explore that because like you said i mean like like we've we've kind of seen like some of the stuff is still out there and you know so uh all right, before we get into spoilers, did you have any last uh, non-spoilery thoughts for this book? Nope. Okay, let me pull up your slides now, and then we'll talk about... So we're going to get into a little bit of spoilers. We're gonna, uh, Clay went through and noted some of the references and things that this book was telling us. Um, so let's see. Here we go. So this is from the opening page. I saw this too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the iconic... vet. So this this is You're the guy that... Wrote... Yeah. Oh, I'm not sharing it. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So here's here's some stuff from the opening pages, uh, and you can. I mean, that was. I thought for sure great. it was Walter Sobchak, you know. So I, yeah. I I pulled John Goodman from there, but the fact that he doesn't have the full beard, he kind of gave me vibes mm -hmm. like the Jesus's uh, partner. So oh, it was okay. Just the mustache. Okay. That's why I pulled him in here because I was like, it almost looks like a mashup of, of like a those combination two. of the two. Yeah, because he's yeah. supposed to be the current bowling champ, right? Uh, yeah, and but then you've got that. you've got the glasses, you've got the vest. It's Walter yeah. Subject. Also, smoking indoors, man. The eighties. I it guess was 90s a free for all, too. man. It was a free. I don't for even all. remember when they stopped allowing smoking indoors, but I remember going. I can't believe we would go into restaurants and be like smoking or not. Like, well, who would want to eat surrounded by smoke? Oh, um, I hated that. All right, Rick next, shows up in his own book. He does. I, I think Rick does. I mean, Remender does this a lot, where he will kind of self-insert like little cameos of himself. I yeah. missed this. That was good eye for you, like. Um, and the, oh, the two kids are obviously inspired by you know, the games. Stranger Things kids. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Um, which is really like kind of cool to put stuff like this on your book, just to um, it really helps. It's a they're very good shortcuts or shorthand to get the reader like to understand kind of what you're going yeah, for. Yeah, you could you could take something that's been done nowadays and say this is the 80s and then yeah. put those kids and you immediately have that kind of trope. Now, no, I put this character in, like, when he goes to talk to the captain on the boat, the yeah, captain yeah. talks like hunter-gatherer from the Venture Brothers. Oh, I didn't... He just didn't gave me that, that vibe. I wasn't okay. saying he looked like anything, but he has that vibe, and it just cracked me up because I couldn't read that character without having that voice read it in my head. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I'm glad you were able to find the voice for the... I think for a lot of these characters, it takes a few issues for me to like connect it to something where they would sound yeah. like. So that that's pretty cool. And, and obviously, yeah. the main character is Sandberg. Yeah, for sure. And his dad is Judd Hirsch. Yeah, great Judd Hirsch. I also saw. I also like would definitely see that. I it even makes me wonder like were they working on a treatment for like a TV show or a. Uh, yeah, because it's a weird introduction to his character like 20 years later that he's just on this boat in a hammock. He's all buffed up, wearing the a, a Rambo-type uh, headband, yeah. 
but he's working for Greenpeace and they don't really respect him on deck, but the captain does. Yeah, like what does he do for Greenpeace? Maybe maybe he is kind of like the muscle where that helps him get out of trouble or something like that. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what exactly he did. I also I also don't know exactly what Greenpeace does on a day-to-day basis, so like that's also maybe so, he did clerical work. Who knows? Maybe. All right. But I uh, dug it. I, I I'm you know, I'm a big Rick Remainder fan, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, we were just talking before the show that Image sent us some uh, previews of the hardcover collections that they're re-releasing for the 10th anniversary of Black Science. So we're definitely going to dive into those. Uh, Spectre video. I, I want to do a video just showing what will be part of those collections, like what kind of back matter and stuff. So maybe we'll do a video on that. Maybe we'll read Black Science for next year. Uh, I think that'd be fun to get into. Uh, I, th- Rick I think we has do a- that. We do that with Starman. We have like a Starman book club, and yeah, Rick Remender has like uh, what's I forget the name of his imprint. That image, oh, Giant Generator, yeah. So very excited for that. Um, cool. Is there anything else on Holy Roller before we move on? No, I'm just kind of curious because it is a violent death. Like it is. Oh, yeah. Since we're fully into spoilers at this point. I mean, we see that racist kid grow up to be a real piece of shit. And yeah. I mean, he just gives me Donald Trump Jr. vibes. And and then you have a guy just beat him and his friends to death with a bowling ball. So that that's kind of what I was like. I feel like we could have, if you were already doing an oversized issue, just do a little bit more where like maybe he thinks about getting the suit or like something like give me that last piece of it to get me to the cover. That was the only thing that I kind of like ran up against at the end. I was like, I get it. I get what we're going for. Like, it's the same bowling ball for sure. But like, you show me this real, like, uh, you show me this really cool cover of like this costume vigilante. Like, I want to know a little bit more about what that's going to be. Right. So, yeah. And the, the, really the last thing that, I mean, the bowler character has the vibe. Like when I see the first bowling character, I think of the bowler from mystery men. Mm-hmm. You know, Janine oh, yeah, yeah. character that's lighthearted and it's like, oh, it's her dad's head in the bowling ball and she talks to it, you know, and it's it's wacky, funny. And this. Yeah. Uh, but then the next time we ever see superheroes in a bowling ball, I feel like it was in Daredevil in that scene where the guy wishes to, you know, get in a game. And when the guy won't let him, he takes a ball, breaks his arm and then yeah. beats his face in with the ball. That is exactly what this <laughs> comic felt like. You went from comedy to violence. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, pick up uh, Holy Roller this week and let us know what you thought about it in the comments. Thanks to Image for sharing this with us. We, yeah. we appreciate these previews. 